hey, today I'm going to show you what subgrid is. It's a fairly new CSS feature which all the major browsers support right now. I'll tell you why you need subgrid and how to use it in Tailwind CSS. For this, I'm first going to take this example of a shopping cart. From the first look of it, you know that grid is the obvious solution for this layout. Why not table? Mainly because tables are not responsive. For a smaller device, maybe you might want to combine some of the columns into a single column, something like this. This is not possible using tables. So grid it is. Let's go ahead and implement this using grid to see what challenges we face. So here it is. I have just added uh, some of the simple styles like, uh, you know, font medium and so on. I haven't added any grid layout yet, right? So that's why you see everything one below the other. We have the structure ready. So we have four of these paragraph tags as titles, product, price, quantity, and everything. And then as you can see, we have five different columns. We need five different columns, the image, which is here, then this div, which has the title and paragraph and product code and everything. And then we have the individual item price, then comes the quantity. And finally, we have the total price. And this repeats again, we have another image, another div and so on, right? So this is very easy to implement in grid as in the structure itself. So let's go ahead and this uh, is the parent div. So what I'm going to do is add grid and in Tailwind, we can only create equi um, equal sized columns or equal sized rows. If we want differently sized columns like here, we want this to occupy only so much that is maybe auto layout. And we want this to stretch and occupy as much remaining space as there. And all the other three columns will be auto as well. So for something like that, we have to use arbitrary values. So let's say grid calls. This is the um, property for grid template columns. So this is what we get, grid template columns. And now what we need is the first column to be auto. And then we uh, we actually need a space in regular CSS, but in Tailwind, this has to be replaced with uh, underscore. You can't leave it as space. So we need auto. The next column is 1FR because we want it to occupy as much space as possible, one fraction. And then the other three are auto, auto, sorry, and auto. Okay, so the moment we add this, um, something is missing. That's because the first paragraph has to span across both the columns, which is why things are a little messed up. So let me quickly add call span to, to this. And let me refresh. Yes, so the moment you add this, uh, we get somewhat similar to what we are expecting. All we need is a gap. So let me add gap six. Some more things here, like the total, um, these things have to be right aligned. So let me go ahead and add that. So for the total, I will say text right. Text right it is. And then I will copy this class. And uh, or maybe I will just say text right here. And down at the bottom as well, text right. Okay. This is great. Uh, the structure is almost done. We just need a border bottom to this so that we're going to do that. But now, obviously, you cannot have all of these um, you know, elements directly under this div class. You might want to separate them, right? Like you might want this row to be under one div and this entire row under another div because you might have actions like, you know, delete this product and things like that. For that, you might want to uh, make this entire product disappear. So there are so many functionalities that we need. For this, you will obviously wrap this entire thing in a div. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. The moment you do that, so let's say you wrap all the paragraphs, uh, that is the titles in a div, and then you're going to wrap each product in another div. 
right. Okay, something's wrong, no problem. And then comes, oh sorry, yeah, this is what was wrong. And then, we have to close this div. Okay, all right. Obviously, uh, the structure is gone because now we have to add those grid template columns to each of these divs. So let's remove it from here or uh, let's just cut it out. And here, let's just say grid calls one because um, that entire thing is one uh, column now. Each of these divs occupy one entire column. And now instead of there, let's add grid and whatever I copied from there, this entire thing, let me paste it once again. Right, and here as well. Okay, so now we have individually added the grid template columns to each of the rows. So some gap might be missing. So what I'll do is I will select all of them and add a gap of six. Okay. Now, the moment you look at it, you might think it's fine, but is it really? As you can see, these uh, columns are not really aligned the way we want them. Okay, here, this example might still not be, uh, it might not be very evident, but definitely this is not the alignment we want for something like this. We need that exact table kind of alignment that you see here. So how do we do that? Now that uh, you know each of these rows are separated with different grid columns, we will not be able to align them. This is where subgrid comes along, right? So what you can do is you can define that entire thing on the parent itself like we did before and make these rows inherit those grid lines. So let's go back. I will remove the grid calls auto from all of the uh, rows that we added. So I will cut this and I'll remove it from here also. And let's add it right here the way we did the first time. Okay, things are not gonna look great uh, immediately, but follow along, just follow along. Now each of these divs, we want them to span across all these five rows, okay? So what we do is I once again, I will select all of this and I will simply add call span five. Okay, you will still not see anything, but the real magic happens now. Now we simply add this utility class called grid calls subgrid. Okay, and look, just like that, everything works. And grid calls subgrid is in regular CSS, it's nothing but grid template columns, subgrid. So this is actual CSS, this is no tailwind magic. Subgrid is a value which makes this row inherit the rows and column lines from the parent. So once again, let me explain what's happening. We have the grid structure defined on the grandparent, right? So we say we need a grid, we need a grid of five columns in you know, such a fashion. And then for this div, that is something that's in between the grid and the actual items that we want to align, we simply say span across all the five columns and inherit the structure to make the, the child items fall into these columns. So let me inspect element and show you the grid lines. So yes, here we go. These are the exact grid lines which are on the parent. And now these items are able to follow them because we're using subgrid. Now that's the power. It's a very small feature, but you can use it in so many different places. I'll show you two more examples now. Take a look at this testimonial cards, right? You've seen this enough number of times. So obviously these testimonials might not be exact same number of lines like you see here, four lines, three lines, two lines or anything like that. But everything is still structured 
in a very nice way that is this name and the designation remains at the bottom everything is neatly aligned uh, one next to the other and you know this is the only one that's varying it's very easy to achieve using subgrid once again let me show you let me inspect and show you so you're able to see this better i will have to click on grid yeah so as you can see the we have four different grid rows and three columns so let me show you the code quickly and uh, you'll see how this is implemented so once again we have this parent container which has grid and grid calls three now this grid calls three is to make these testimonials um, appear in three different columns three equal columns and then we have this grid rows and this definition of auto one fr auto auto for these four child items so the image occupies auto height one fr is for this testimonial because this is the one that usually varies and then this is auto row and this is also auto sized now this is defined on the grandparent and then we have each of these testimonial divs where we say grid uh, you know we have this row span 4 the way we did call span 4 in the previous example we just have row span 4 and then we just say inherit the you know grid template rows from the parent by saying grid rows subgrid so once again this in regular css would be grid template rows and the value is subgrid and that's all you need to do for each of these uh, you know cards grid row subgrid row span four and then you have everything magically fit in to a very neat grid layout let me show you one last example now now this is a drop down example that adam Wathen himself tweeted about um the tailwind play link i can the tweet the tweet link and the tailwind play link i can link below in the description but i've just changed it to dark mode just to keep everything easy on your eyes so here's what he showed that, uh, you know, you might have a drop down like this with icons. They could be optional and they could be keyboard shortcuts, which could be optional as well. So let's say if I remove this SVG from here or this SVG from here, we have everything neatly fitting this way. Or let's say I will add back both the SVGs, but I will remove the keyboard shortcut. Still, everything looks very neat and uh, great we don't have things moving around so that's once again achieved in the same way using subgrid so on the parent we just say grid grid calls auto one fr and auto and then in each of these uh, links or it could be buttons or anything each of these rows we once again say call span three grid calls subgrid the only thing uh, additional thing in this example is that we have added a call start to to this uh, particular column because let's say if we don't do that so if we miss that yeah this is what happens right so we definitely want that item to start at the second column that's the only additional thing otherwise everything else is great so this is subgrid um, when I've spoken about this to people in talks they say oh my god i didn't know subgrid existed probably this is what i needed all along for my grid layouts so i hope this new thing makes grid layouts much easier for you let me know if you have any questions or if you want to see some more examples thank you for watching thank you for watching hit a like and share this video ahead if you enjoyed watching this don't forget to subscribe below and turn on the notifications so you won't miss a single video from Tyrus.